Now here is Bob Egan being questioned by one of Tommy Ziegler's attorneys. The question is, Mr. Egan, did you ever tell Mr. Fry that subtyping would not be necessary? Egan's answer is no. Question by the lawyer. You never told Mr. Fry that? Answer from Egan. I have no recollection of that at all. Question. So if Mr. Fry testified along those lines, he would be mistaken. Answer from Egan. Mr. Fry did not go to Washington with us. Question. The question is, did you tell Mr. Fry that it would not be necessary to subtype that blood? Answer. No. Question. Part of the deposition I just showed you, I'd like for you to review this. You were present at that deposition of Mr. Fry, were you not? Answer from Mr. Egan. This is the deposition of Donald Fry. Shows my presence there, yes. Question. So you were present, right? Uh-huh. You were present when Don Fry made that statement that you had told him it would not be necessary to subtype the blood. Correct answer. Where is that statement? Question. Let me get you the page number. Answer. His statement is that Corporal Shannon accompanied Mr. Egan to Washington. I believe a request was made, but they, referring to Shannon and Egan, were, were given information which said that wouldn't be necessary. Something to that effect. Mr. Duane. And the next question was that it would not be necessary or it would not be possible. Answer, I don't know. I was told it wouldn't be necessary. I'm sure you can ask Corporal Shannon. Cor Corporal Shannon told you this? Answer, Corporal Shannon and Mr. Egan. Answer, we told Mr. Fry that the Federal Bureau of Investigations had told us that it would not be necessary. Okay, the question was, did you instruct the FBI to subtype the blood? And Mr. Egan, who was in charge of the entire case, says, I certainly didn't. That was all the, in the hands of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Question, did you actively, at that point, try to prevent the defense from collecting the blood? That crucial piece of information when you knew the autopsy would show that there were three people with the same blood type. Answer, no sir, I didn't try to keep the defense from getting anything. Question, fingerprint impressions were also taken from this interior of the store and sent to the FBI. Answer, that's my recollection, yes. Question, now fingerprints in your experience as a prosecutor can be used either to identify a particular person or to eliminate a particular person as a suspect. Is that correct? Answer by Mr. Egan, I would think so, yes. Question, and if there's one you unusual mark on a particular fingerprint that one point is enough to eliminate someone correct or identify them answer by mr egan perhaps now in this case fingerprints that might have been used to eliminate suspects were in fact shredded by the fbi is that correct answer by mr egan i was told that that's what they did yes question by tommy's lawyer did you instruct them to destroy or otherwise dispose of these prints absolutely not Question, did you instruct them to preserve them? The answer by the man in charge of the entire case, Robert Egan. No, I did not instruct them to preserve the prints. Question, are you aware that Mr. Ziegler's defense was that he had been robbed? Answer by Mr. Egan. That was his story, yes. Question, and those fingerprints were essential. Were they not to support the defense? Uh, answer, I don't, I would not say that they were. This was a public store. Question, okay, now going on to Tommy Ziegler's clothes. You sent Tommy Ziegler's clothes to the FBI in Washington, D.C. for analysis. Is that correct? Answer by Mr. Egan, no, sir, I didn't send anything to the FBI in Washington. Question, let me get that straight. But it was done, to your knowledge. Answer by Mr. Egan, the man in charge of the entire case. I assume it was. Question, okay, the issue there being if his pants... If some 28 bullet, bullets were fired that evening, correct, a large amount of weapons were discharged that night. Answer by Mr. Egan. He did a lot of shooting, yes. Question. And the theory was, the theory was that Mr. Ziegler had done that shooting, correct? Answer by Mr. Egan, yes. Question. 
You weren't present. You don't know who actually did the shooting, do you, Mr. Egan? Answer, no. So you're basing it on the evidence. The FBI issued a report that there was no gun residue on Tommy Ziegler's pants. That report was not turned over to the defense until they went to Washington themselves. Did you instruct the FBI not to issue a report on that point? Mr. Egan's answer, no. Did you instruct them to issue a report? The man in front, charge of the entire case says no. He did not instruct the FBI to issue a report on that case. Question by the lawyers. If you send blood samples and fingerprints and guns, not you, but it was done, to the FBI rather than the Sanford fingerprints, blood samples, guns, Thomas Ziegler's clothes to the FBI, why weren't Charlie Mays' clothes sent to the FBI? Why weren't Charlie Mays' clothes sent? And why weren't Felton Thomas' clothes sent? And why weren't Edward Williams' clothes sent to the FBI? Answer by the man in charge of the entire case, Bob Egan. You'll have to ask the sheriff's office. They made those decisions. Question, did you instruct them to do it? Answer by Mr. Egan, no. Question, did you ever instruct Don Fry to tell the defense that those items had, in fact, been sent to... Washington. Answer, I'm sure I did not. Question, the state in fact did not conduct any testing on those items, did they? Answer by Mr. Egan, no sir. And the state did not turn those items over to the defense until two weeks prior to the trial. Isn't that correct, Mr. Egan? Mr. Egan's answer is, that may be true. I think we turned them over at the time to the court. We went through the ordinary discovery process. It was all done in a routine fashion so far as that goes. This is the man who was in charge of the entire case and this is what he did to be sure that Tommy Ziegler could not prove his innocence.